Hello, and welcome to my tech farm. This is not a typical video for this channel, which is mostly about uh, 3D printing and some Arduino electronics. But actually, calipers are very useful tools in 3D printing too. Whenever you want to measure the size of the calibration cube, or you just want to check the diameter of the filament. The main reason I'm creating this video is that I'm teaching basics of mechanical engineering here on St. Ishan University. And one of the lessons is exactly this, calipers. But unfortunately, because of this pandemic situation, as you can see, there are no students in the classroom, so the education moved online. And I thought, why not recreate this video in English and make it available for public, not only for my students. In the first part of this video, I will talk about the main parts and how to use the calipers, and it will be independent of the type of the caliper. And in the second half, I will talk about how to read values from the calipers, and of course, here will be a very big difference depend if you are using digital, dial, or vernier caliper. So, let's start with the basics. Let's see the main parts and how to use them. Here we have digital, dial, and vernier calipers, and all of them has that fixed and sliding or moving part. And uh, here we can find some uh, retainer or locking mechanism. Usually it is some kind of screw to lock it in the position. It is very useful if you want to read uh, something, but if we cannot see that directly, we cannot read the value, then we can lock the position and then comfortably read the, the dimension. Of course, the main part are these big jaws. One uh, is fixed and the one is on the uh, sliding part. We have this flat surface they are used for outer dimensions and outer measurements. But end of these jobs is sharp. They're very useful if you want to measure the distance from the hole. And uh, don't forget, uh, we cannot uh, measure with uh, this part here of the jobs because we will get the uh, fake dimensions. Of course, very important is to check are the jobs clean first. And uh, you can check uh, the, if there is any dirt be between them. Uh, if you put some uh, light source behind it, and you shouldn't see any gaps. And especially with the plastic, uh, pay attention, don't press it too strongly, because with that you can get uh, even three or four hundred uh, of millimeter less. That's why I better like the micrometer, which has this uh, limiter, so I cannot over tight it to get a too strong force here to measure smaller value. But this is not the subject of this video. Small jaws uh, are already sharp, they are usually used to measure inner dimensions and uh, very commonly the inner diameters. It's a little bit tricky, uh, you, sh you have to move it a little bit to pay attention you are measuring the in the center when the bigger value is. Then we have the dipped probe or rod for deep measurements and it's moving together with the sliding part. We can measure the depth of some hole. Or even for height of the step. Now, uh, some calipers have a step measurement, like this one here. This one don't have. You can recognize it by uh, these two surfaces are aligned with each other. Here they are not. The function is same like with the depth, depth meter, because uh, you are measuring one outer and one inner measurement. Let me show you here. I'm aligning this surface on the bottom of the step and moving the sliding part until I touch the top surface and then I can measure the value. But as I mentioned, uh, I can measure it with a deep meter too. A few words about the digital calipers. Mm, here I have uh, three pieces. This one, uh, this cost five, fifteen, and hundred and fifteen dollars. This expensive has absolute linear encoder. This means it has uh, it can directly read out the absolute uh, linear position, so only for for zeroing or resetting the uh, display. But uh, anyway, I was always recommend when you start uh, using it, always check is it in zero position because you have to check are the jaws clean, and then uh, you can use it for measurement. 
and for example this one is very expensive but it doesn't uh, have a millimeter and inch switch button and it doesn't turn off automatically these two are cheaper so they have the relative linear encoder and theoretically uh, if I move it very fast, uh, theoretically, sometimes it can uh, skip the counting and uh, you can may have uh, error in measurement. But, uh, but, okay, this one is very cheap. I really don't recommend this plastic version. But even this can be used correctly. The correct using is uh, first check the jaws are there clean. Check the zero position. Do the measurement and at the end always check are you still on zero with the caliper. And this one, has a uh, this one is a little bit expensive than, than this one but it also has the switch button between the inches and millimeters. And here the process is the same, always check the jaws are there clean, check the zero position do the measurement and at the end always check are you still on zero and one quick advice always have a spare battery near you because sometimes it will run out the power and uh, you will need the caliper and you cannot use it now a few words about dial calipers they are mechanical and they don't need a battery they work on a rack and pinion gear system i'm not sure is it visible the rack gear Now first I will talk about uh, the metric dial calipers. Unfortunately these two are a little bit bad examples, but uh, I'll explain it here. So we have the main scale in millimeters. So we have to read the whole millimeter on main scale and a uh, fraction of the millimeter on dial scale. Now this is a toy cost less than five dollars and uh, here <laughs> the, it makes the rotation every 10 millimeters so uh, for example this is now 34.7 millimeters value on this scale now but uh, forget about this i really don't recommend this type now this is a little bit more serious but again bad example because uh, this one is very unique it has a mechanical millimeter counter on it so it doesn't have a millimeter scale uh, here on the main scale. We have it here, it's in some opposite side. Uh, but uh, this is really uh, good quality, precise caliper. And uh, here the dial uh, makes a rotation every two millimeters. So here on the counter I have to measure the whole millimeters and fraction of the millimeters I have to measure on dial scale. So now it is 34.26 now also there is a version where the main scale is still in millimeters but uh, dial makes rotation uh, every millimeter so it is even it has even higher precision so this one is 0 0.02 millimeters and that one is 0 0.01 millimeter but the principle is the same and here on this image I will explain uh, again. So here we have the millimeter scale as a main scale and uh, the fraction of millimeter we have to read on the dial scale. Let's read this one together. So here we have a little bit more than 15 millimeters and on a dial scale we have uh, 64. This means 15.64 millimeter is this dimension. And here is another example. Let's read it together. So on millimeter scale we have 20 millimeters and fraction of millimeters we can read the dial scale it is 18 so 20.18 millimeters is the dimension on this caliper. Now the working principle on, of imperial dial calipers is similar. The main scale is in 0.1 inch division so the whole inch and the first decimal place we can read here. And since the needle rotates every 0.1 inch, this means that the second and third decimal place we read on dial scale. In this example, we have more than 1.1 inch, but less than 1.2. We don't see the next hairline. And second and third decimal numbers are read on dial scale, and it is in this case 65. So the di final dimension is 1.1 
plus 0 0.065, it is 1.165 inch. Let's see one more example. In this case we have less than 1 inch, so this is 0 0.8 inch on main scale. And on the dial scale we have 66. So the final dimension is 0 0.866 inches. And one more example. So we have 2 inches and a little bit more, but uh, we don't see the next hairline of the 0 0.1 inch. So the, on main scale we read 2.0 and on the dial scale we can see it is 27. So the final dimension here is 2.027 inches. And this dial caliper has two scales. The red one is the metric and outer the black is imperial. So try to read these two values without my help. I will just show you the results in two seconds. And these dial calipers can be zeroed if necessary by rotating this scale. But before you do that, always check that the jobs are clean and only then zero the scale if necessary. And you can lock it with this screw. And now let's talk about vernier calipers. These are in metric, but this one has the imperial scale on the top, so I can explain uh, how to use it. Vernier calipers are very cheap, they don't need battery, they don't have complex mechanisms, and they can be very accurate, so don't underestimate them. The only problem is that the reading of the vernier scale is not that comfortable compared to the uh, dial or digital calipers. And for example, this is uh, my primary uh, caliper, but uh, this is also mine. It's a marking caliper where I can uh, lock it to some uh, size and I can uh, create a line for cutting or milling or similar. And as you can see, it's all on vernier calipers, so I don't want to have a dial or digital caliper because I use it very rarely. So, uh, so that's why it is useful to learn how to read those uh, vernier calipers. First I will explain how, to, uh, how this vernier scale works, but if you want to learn how to read the calipers only, then you can skip to this time step because this will be maybe boring to you. I will explain it on s simplest vernier scale when I divided 9 millimeters into 10 pieces. So this here is the millimeter scale and this is the vernier scale here. The vernier scale is on the sliding part and the millimeter scale is on the fixed part. Now if I divided 9 millimeters into 10 pieces, then the precision is 0 0.1 millimeters. This means that distance between these two lines is 0 0.1 millimeter. Distance between these two lines is 0 0.2 millimeters. Distance between these two lines is 0 0.4 millimeters. So I, if I move with 0 0.4 millimeters, then this line will be aligned with this line here. But if I move it 0.4 millimeter any distance, so this is 2.4 millimeter. Again, this line will be aligned with the upper hairline. So on vernier scale, I can read the uh, friction of the dividing scale, which is in this case one millimeter. And the precision depends how many divides I have on the vernier scale. Now this is the simplest version, where, I, as I mentioned, nine is divided by ten. Now these two calipers has uh, 20 divisions on the vernier scale. This means their accuracy is 0.05 millimeters. And there are calipers where we have 50 divisions on the vernier scale. Their accuracy is 0.02 millimeters. But there it's a little bit hard to uh, make a decision to see which uh, exactly which line is aligned with the upper line. So that's the, 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 uh, these are the most common versions.
and it doesn't make any difference that here uh, this is this vernier scale is longer but it has the same number of, of the divisions like this one here so their accuracy is the same what is important with the vernier scale which is common a mistake or error that uh, you don't look the edge of the sliding scale but you are looking where is the zero unlike with the dial calipers where you are uh, watching the edge of the sliding part so that's very important so the on the main scale in this case we are reading the whole millimeters and a fraction of the millimeters we are reading on the vernier scale okay let's see three examples but only first for on the metric scale so first search where is the zero and uh, it, it's uh, the last line on the millimeter scale is 24 millimeters and the next step that I'm searching which line is aligned with the upper uh, main scale hairline and in this case 55 so this dimension is 24.55 millimeters same this is that marking caliper let's uh, take some measurement here 58 millimeters and part of the millimeter is again 55 so in this case maybe it is hard to make a decision does it cross the 30 millimeter line or it is on a 90 uh, on 29 but uh, that's why I try always to estimate the rest of the millimeter so I can see maybe this is 29 but almost 30 so then I can search on the uh, vernier scale to see which is aligned and if this case it's uh, 95 so this means it is 29.95 another similar example again I'm not sure is it uh, 24 or maybe 25 the, the whole millimeter and I can estimate so at approximately it is approximately 25 so let's see which is aligned how uh, the zero the first line the 0 0.05 line this means this value is 25.05 and now let's talk about the imperial vernier scale and as you can see the upper scales here in both cases is imperial in fractions i will use this one but they are equal now as you can see the, the main scale has inches divided into 16 pieces so distance between two hairlines is 1 16th of the inch so the first step will be the reading on the main scale and uh, the accuracy here is 1 16th and then uh, you can see the vernier scale it, here it writes that it is 1 uh, 128th of the inch so here we have uh, eight hairlines and we have to find which one is aligned with the uh, main uh, scale and that would be 128 of the inch and of course we have to do some math to add these two numbers let's see a few examples so again don't forget we have to search where is the zero not the edge of the sliding scale so where the edge is and the first line on the left side is this one here so one inch and one two three four hail lines so uh, i will write it here one inch and four we said it's sixteenth of the inch and now let's see which line on the vernier scale is aligned with the main scale and well it looks like a four so let's write it so plus four one hundred and twenty eight and the rest is the math so it is one inch plus and we can uh, convert this by multiplying uh, both sides by uh, 8. So this is equal. So if you simplify this, this is 1 by 1 inch and uh, 9 32 parts of the inch. Let's see another example. So first we have to read the main scale and I can see it is 2 inches and uh, one hairline is only before the zero so it is uh, one sixteenth of the inch and then let's see the vernier scale which will be the 128 of the inch and i can see this uh, line number seven 
hairline is aligned with the lower line. And now let's do the math. So 2 inch and 1 sixteenth plus on Verniacre 7 by 128. Again, we, we, it's 2. We multiply this by 8. 15, and this is one last example, try to solve without my help. I will just show you the result in uh, 2 seconds. Well, that would be my lessons from the calipers. I know I couldn't cover every area in this topic, but I hope I give you some new information too. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in my next video.